Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour. Welcome back to a quick discussion on patching Zero Hour, reverse engineering uh, Zero Hour, and uh, a little bit of a call for help, really, on um, people that are knowledgeable in C++ um, or C++14, whatever that is, in, in terms of programming, I believe it's, uh, it'll probably make sense to you if, you if you're familiar with that. But basically, there is this project called Time. No, I'm flicking between the tabs. I do apologize for flicking so quick, but there's basically a project going on called Time. Uh, mainly run by, I think, this guy called Omniblade. I don't know if we can see him here or not. There he is, Omniblade, and I believe he's doing the majority of the work. But basically what they are doing is reverse engineering zero hour. As far as I'm aware, what that means is slowly revealing the source code and being able to break down the source code um, so that you will be able to literally fix anything or change anything in the game. So think about lag issues, think about mismatches, think about how many times your game has crashed with serious errors. Think about when you have too many units on the screen, everything just freezes and the game breaks. All big things like that, but also think about things like um, being able to just open the game and you'd have like a launcher. You'd be able to launch different mods or just run the original game or run the balance patch or all kinds of stuff like that. It basically, by, by reverse engineering the game and unlocking the source code, you enable anything. You can change anything within the game. So you could also think about things that I'm thinking about and getting excited about is having like 12 player free for alls rather than limited to eight. Think about when that eighth player normally joins and your game usually bugs out because you've all got longer names than three characters, things like that. That's what I think unlocking the source code and reverse engineering the game would be able to unlock and able to give us. So yeah, if you're knowledgeable in C++ or maybe any of these other little things, um, I think C++ makes up 96% of it. They are desperately in need of people with that knowledge. It's not paid work or anything like that. You'd have to have an interest in Zira without the expectation to make any money from it and you'd have to have some free time but anything that you can contribute if you're familiar with C++ programming coding whatever you want to call it then this is the uh, this is the place to be this is the link I'll paste that in the de description of this video and also there's a little bit of information about it here so it's basically a project called time needs C++ um git and github is basically the website where it's being run and then op optional skills there's a few things here cmake x86 assembler as if I know any of this, reverse engineering, either Gidra, whatever that is. Uh, but basically, if you're familiar with any of this, even maybe if you're just familiar with one of these things and you can help a little bit, then there is a Discord channel where you could probably go there and message one of these people and uh, get involved. And basically, yeah, it would unlock a whole host of things in the future, not just being able to balance the game, but also... Um, yeah, all of the bugs and things that I just mentioned as well. There is also this game patch going on. Um, basically, it's been touted as 1.04 plus. That I did make a video back in September, so just uh, just over a month ago. In this video, if you did watch it, I was quite negative about a patch coming coming forward because if we did implement it, it might split the community and you'd probably end up with 50% of people on the 1.04 patch and you'd probably end up with 50% of people on 1.04 plus. For those of you that did watch that whole video, you'll see I was quite negative and I was against doing a patch. As time has gone by and I've been thinking about it more and more, I have started to get slightly more excited about a patch. And the reason is that when you think about how many bugs are in the game right now, um, there are a hell of a lot. This website here is github.com this is not the time one that's the time one but this one here is about a general's game patch and loads of people are chipping in here so also a bit of a call to help if you are a modder of zero hour you understand any of these things if you have a functional brain <laughs> if you've got git and github if you're familiar with any of these things any scripts or wnd or w3d models or textures or anything like that then you might be able to help out with this patch as well and yeah, the more and more I think about it, the more and more excited I'm getting about it, the more and more positive I'm, I am about it because there are so many bugs in Zero that affect me on a daily basis. I did an eight hour stream yesterday and I'm sure like three or four of the games ended with either bugs or crashes or mismatches or serious errors or something like that. So imagine if we could play games 100% every time they'd be like 90% balanced and we'd have no errors, no mismatches, no lag and or reduced lag, let's say, and reduced number of mismatches, let's not say never. But there are so many bugs in Zero. Like for example... The frenzy of China infantry being able to scan the map, just like a USA scan. Been touted here as a bug. Should that frenzy really be scanning the map? Because it is really imbalanced. Think about China infantry versus China vanilla, for example. When the China infantry uses the scan on the China at the beginning of the game, if the infantry plays it 100% right, the China really should not be able to win. And that happens in most tournaments. Uh, Jarmin sniping vehicles, when that bug happens... Uh, stealth units bug. Uh, there are just so many bugs. There's one. There's one I've been talking about today about um, 
when dozers are able to drive off bridges or units act really buggy around bridges, where sometimes GLA terrorists walk into buildings and suicide in the middle of the building rather than suicide on the outside. Uh, yeah, whether GLA demo terrorists should be doing damage to friendly units because it's a bit weird that GLA demo doesn't do friendly fire damage to its own units, but all the other GLAs do. So it's like fixing things like that. It's been classed here as controversial because the experts will need to get involved. Is that going to break the game or not? It is, it is going to change the game, but it's a bit weird that one terrorist out of all of them would react differently, especially when demo terrorists, you would expect them to be the more powerful and the more deadly. A little bit strange. Um, but yeah, there's so many bugs here. I think there's 126 bugs just listed here alone, and these are probably the ones that are still actually being discussed. I don't even think they're the ones that have been resolved. Um, I mean, yeah, you can have a read through this as your heart's content. There's so many bugs beacon and chat can be exploited to put text onto objects yeah i've seen beacons before where you can beacon a unit and then write a load of text on it and the the text follows the unit um tank projectiles causing mismatches i mean that's that's a game breaker <laughs> i mean yeah there's so many here uh what's this one stinger site does not benefit from ap rockets i mean that's definitely a bug isn't it because it actually says rocket attacks um, are benefited from the AP rockets, but it's not actually fixing the Stinger site. So there's so many, um, so many things. Think about a Spectre gunship, and uh, yeah, I mean there's so many bugs. And basically, the more and more I think about it, even though I made this video a month ago and I was quite negative about it, at least I'm taking a balanced approach. I'm not just taking someone's word for it that a balanced patch is going to be a good idea. I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking about it. I've played this game for many years, and I'm actually getting quite excited about it. The fact that we would be able to fix a load of balance issues, you'd be able to play a tournament. And when you get China versus Tox, you know you've actually got a decent chance. Rather than just getting steamrolled, you'd be able to have like an advanced AI. And ever since I made that video back then, um, Zezan actually made this video kind of in response to my video. Well, at least I think it is three hours long. I'm not going to say to watch this whole thing unless you're super interested. Um, although a thousand people already have. Um, probably a few of them is me because I've been skipping through it whilst I was uh, <laughs> watching on my phone. Uh, but basically the main takeaway from this is that it, the, this future patch that may or may not come out is not just a balance patch, it's a game data patch and it will fix all of those things I just mentioned. Fixing all those bugs, fixing uh, having graphical improvements, maybe fixing some sounds that were wrong or were bad before. Um, it's basically a, a massive fix for the game, not just a balance patch, which is what I basically said in my original video. So this is basically just a short video update on those kind of things. I'll leave a link to my original video here. I'll leave a link to Zezon's video here, which is the response to it. And I will leave a link to this page here, which is basically a call for help for the C++ and also for the game patch in general. If you're a modder of Zero Hour, if you have knowledge in any of this stuff, you may be able to help out. And I will also leave a link to the GitHub, which is where basically both of these projects are going on. So this is the General's game patch that may uh, make him about in the future. And this is the time one. So if, yeah, if you're familiar with C++, there is actually somewhere here where you can actually see, is it Insights? Uh... There's somewhere here where you can basically see the biggest contributor and how much of the project is actually done. Is it that? Uh, oh, there you go. New engine, new audio engine. Run content from generals unmodified. Not quite sure. But you can have a flick through this. I'm not familiar too much with GitHub myself. Uh, but there is somewhere where you can actually see the full length of the project. But this, this time is the biggest one. And then basically... Uh, well, they're both big, but time, as far as I understand it, is reversing the source code, which is actually very, very, as far as I understand it, very, very difficult to do. And EA Games, by the way, if you're watching this, you, you probably realize how um, difficult reverse source coding is. And I know Zezon had before has contacted EA. Can we, can specific trusted people within the community be, have access to the source code? Because we care about the game so, so much. And EA Games just don't contact us. They don't release a new game. They've kind of abandoned Command & Conquer in general it would help us massively if the source code was released just to maybe a few specific members here and we were able to do this without without having to reverse engineer the game is so inefficient when you think about it but we get that re releasing the source code also has risks as well but if someone from ea games is watching this and someone can help us then that would be appreciated appreciate as well i highly doubt it but let's just say it anyway <laughs> anyway i'll leave the links to all of this in the description only a short one but um, yeah, if you can help out in any way, or if you've got any thoughts, whether they're positive or negative about the patch or whatever, leave them in the description and I'll uh, be sure to read and uh, give my response as well. So GG, peace out.